Okay, so now we're interested in using our financial calculator to do compound interest calculations. So for compound interest calculations, we actually just interested in this row over here. And then our second function button and the CA button, which clears our data and not our variables. So let's just go through what all these buttons represent. So N is the total number of payments. It will also be connected to our compounding periods in regards to our uh, still our easy compound interest calculations. So if our compounding periods is in months, it's going to display in months in this case when our PY and our CY correspond with each other. Then we'll have our IY and this is our interest rate per year. So this is our nominal interest rate and it's in percentage. So when we use a financial calculator, it doesn't do what we do with the formulas where we need to convert it. It will do it for us. And then we have our PV, which is our present value. And then we're interested in our FV, which is our future value. Now, I've already spoken about this. I spoke about payment periods and compounding periods. How do we get there? So we'll have the second function button and to get to the PY. So second function PY. And this is our number of payments per year. So for our basic compound interest questions, the number of payment periods and the number of compounding periods will coincide. We will look at examples where this doesn't happen later on. And what happens is if we set it in, currently it's set to 12, the default's actually one. So let's just clear our memory. Second function CA. So we've cleared our data, not our variables. So now you see it's sitting at one. How do we put in our payment periods and therefore our compounding periods? We will just type in and say it is daily. So we type in 365 and we push enter. So how did we do that? We said second function, PY, we put in our value, we pushed enter. Now to get to the compounding periods, we are just going to push down. And if you push down, we see compounding periods and it's set to 365. So the default is to have the payment periods and the compounding periods coinciding. So for us, for our basic um, compound interest calculations, this is how you're going to have it set up. And, but if we did want to change it, we would just say like 25 and enter and we would change that. If you push up, you see your PY is 365 there. You'll see why is 25. We can change again, 365, enter, to have them corresponding with each other. So that's how we would input our payment periods. And we input our payment periods so that we can enter our compounding periods. To enter these other values, we're just going to clear our screen. So, you know, fresh start kind of situation, but all your data is still stored in there. And we're going to put in uh, like our numbers. So say we have N, just 23, we push 23 and then N, and then it stores it in N just like that. So saying 23 goes into N, N is now 23. And we can say 5, I, Y kind of a situation. Again, to store it, just 5 and push I, Y. Now the thing of interest to us is that our calculator is going to need a little bit of guidance on what is the inflow of money of money and what is the outflow of money. So we say our present value is three, six, five, zero, 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 kind of a thing. We put it in as present value there. And we now ask our calculator to compute the future value because we've given it the N, the I, Y, and the P, V you'll notice it's going to come up as a negative. So our calculator is considering the fact that we put in money, we invested it, and now we're going to get it back. So in the situation that I've done there, with the present value being positive, we've gotten the money, and then we have to pay it back. So this it's more like a loan kind of a thing. If I refer to it from my point of view, if I was looking at it from the point of view of a bank or something, I gave them you know, money to invest. So then they had money to use. And at the end of the period, they need to give me back this year. So the plus and the minus is related to the inflow and outflow of money. And you're going to have to be very careful about that when you're going through the process, particularly like if you're working with depreciation and so on.